We have been looking at design applications uh, in the previous classes and uh, some of which are uh, PCA orbiter and uh, therein we have seen um, uh, also an example of um, video compression system and uh, how to configure them uh, on based on PCA bus. And for that we need to uh, needed a controller and uh, that is what we had developed on the uh, on that occasion and uh, subsequently uh, we have gone for a, another application called a, a traffic controller and uh, uh, we have uh, uh, also seen uh, video compression um, algorithm, how to develop the algorithm and then finally, um, um, uh, code it in Verilog. So, as to uh, make a, um, uh, an encoder, video encoder as such and we have used um, uh, basically the uh, discrete cosine transform and quantization for in order to affect the compression and uh, uh, thereafter uh, 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 we need to gain experience uh, on um, uh, actual uh, hardware and for that we need to have uh, uh, FPGA boards and uh, uh, so far what we have seen is um, uh, only the CAD tools namely the um, uh, uh, model sim tool uh, to uh, do the simulation namely to get the timing diagram and so and analyze the circuit based on that uh, study and uh, thereafter we also uh, use the simplified tool in order to do the uh, logic synthesis. It uh, mapped not only the device, um, but also the um, uh, you got um, um, RTL view etcetera uh, in that uh, synthesis tool and uh, it also uh, 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 generates an EDF file which we had taken for uh, Xilinx place and route and um, uh, map the actual uh, device and uh, uh, done place and route. And we have also seen um, uh, the back annotation, so as to reflect the actual gate delays and then plow it back into the uh, model sim simulator, uh, so that uh, we could see the actual gate delays incorporated. And um, place and route uh, repo I mean, um, uh, reported, I mean uh, the frequency of operation reported uh, by the place and route. Uh, is uh, what is to be uh, actually taken into account when we actually design the system. And um, uh, once we uh, run it through uh, place and route 
say uh, here in this case uh, uh, Xilinx play center which we have already seen. Then the frequency of operation uh, reported by that uh, is uh, more or less um, uh, going to uh, be operating on the uh, right on the FPGA board and which we are going to see um, uh, presently. And this is what is uh, going to be done um, uh, in the next uh, few uh, lectures. And uh, prior to this, we need to become familiar with um, some of these uh, boards. First, let us see uh, there are many vendors as far as the um, uh, boards are concerned, and uh, namely uh, Excess and um, uh, um, Avnet, and uh, even uh, Xilinx has some uh, boards available, and uh, plenty of other uh, manufacturers are also available for uh, manufacturing I mean, uh, for making FPGA uh, based uh, boards and they have very many features which you can very I mean readily use in many of the applications that uh, you need for your own development. And uh, let us first have a look at excess uh, board and uh, this is from excess corporation and uh, you can um, uh, that is a site I mean uh, www excess this is the spelling note this x e ws.com. So, if you go into that you can uh, download all the manuals etcetera and uh, when you purchase these boards you will uh, also get a copy of that um, in on CD uh, fundamentally along with the software that goes along with this. And uh, this is what is called XSB board and uh, what we have here is uh, version uh, 1.1 and this uh, has uh, XCV 800 as the uh, device which we will be seeing shortly and prior to that this is basically the manual of this excess uh, corporation uh, uh, user manual for the board and uh, let us go to the relevant uh, point and uh, so that we can uh, see what board um, uh, contains. These are all the features of this uh, um, excess board and uh, this contains uh, pro programmable logic chips and uh, there are two basically two chips available. One is for your app own application wherein you had to uh, download the bitstream which you have got in place and route and this is the place where you had to download your uh, bitstream and that is uh, based on Xilinx Vertex FPGA and uh, the device is XCV 800. On uh, many occasion I think we have uh, used some such uh, device in our uh, design while uh, um, I mean uh, doing earlier and uh, it is a 240 pin PQ FP package and uh, this is what is housed on the board and we will be seeing the board um, uh, both pictorially as well as the actual hardware and uh, we will also see the um, uh, uh, whole thing configured for uh, one of the applications and uh, we may be uh, looking into the applications uh, some of the applications which we have de uh, designed or going to design. And uh, this particular FPGA um, in fact uh, this can this um, uh, this socketed and uh, uh, I am sorry this is not socketed and uh, some of uh, the FPGA boards are socketed and this pr uh, present uh, board uh, I do not think it is socketed which we can have a look later on and uh, uh, it can um, otherwise we may have to if you want to change it to different FPGAs of different capacities for example, XCB 50 is for 50,000 gates capacity and uh, like that they have very many. Um, uh, FPG is available uh, either on I mean it has got to be a different uh, cards as such. And uh, what we have here and we are going to demonstrate will be based on this XCV 800 this is at the highest end of their uh, product here uh, for the time being. And uh, when uh, new uh, devices come they may have uh, incorporated that and uh, bring about a different boot for that as well. And uh, this is capacity 800 stands for the 800,000 actually it goes for 8888 um, kilo uh, gates here and, uh, and this is uh, on this XSV board and this is the main uh, FPGA which uh, in which we will be downloading our um, uh, application programs. For example, uh, if you want to put a traffic controller which we have designed before and uh, we need to download that bitstream onto this uh, FPGA here. And next is we uh, there is also another um, uh, FPGA equivalent this is called complex programmable logic device uh, abbreviated as CPLD and this will not contain as many gates as uh, XCB 800. It may go only for few thousand gates here and uh, this CPLD is used to manage the configuration of the vertex FPGA that is uh, the vertex FPGA is what we are having here 
it is the one which um, will um, take in the bit stream for your application and uh, whatever application you are downloading it will be on this FPGA and uh, the circuit is configured on this FPGA and uh, you also need in order to um, do the management you need this uh, CPLD as well and that is uh, uh, it manages the configuration of the vertex FPGA via the parallel port. There is also on the board a parallel port and which can be connected to the parallel port of the uh, standard computers say personal computers such as Pentium and uh, uh, LPT 1 or LPT 2 there is a provision for selecting any of this that you want and it also has a serial port and uh, through which uh, RS 232 type of communication can be undertaken here and for any uh, of your application you can use this or you can even download the bit stream through the serial port, but it is going to be a time consuming thing. It is preferable that we take the parallel port and this is what we are going to adopt and uh, it also has flash RAM. Flash RAM is a non volatile RAM even with the uh, power switch off it will still retain whatever uh, its contents are and uh, the, so it is a convenient uh, media wherein you can put your um, uh, bit stream. So, that is the application circuit that you have configured can be put into the flash RAM and even with the power off and uh, um, uh, the um, uh, code is not uh, disturbed, the bit stream is not disturbed. So, when you switch on power once again it can uh, immediately start uh, working on your code uh, or the, uh, rather the circuit which you have uh, configured. The CPLD also controls the configuration of Ethernet uh, chip and you have a Ethernet chip also available right on the card and uh, it is also capable of um, uh, having different clock speeds for uh, FPG operation and uh, it goes right up to 100 megahertz and uh, lower uh, values also you can have this we will see shortly and uh, what uh, different ranges how to program that all that we will be seeing and it also has 16 uh, megabit of flash RAM the flash RAM we have already seen here and uh, that can store multiple configurations that means different bit streams can be stored at different location and uh, retrieved at any point of time for operation or it can uh, have general purpose data which may be uh, for example you may be working on video compression. So, for which you may require huge storage. So, you can use this um, uh, flash RAM uh, so that um, uh, uh, since it is uh, uh, non volatile it will be very handy to use in uh, uh, fl uh, flash RAM as such and uh, it also has 2 independent um, uh, 512k into 16 uh, static RAM banks. It is basically uh, organized as um, 8 bits that is a byte oriented thing. Uh, and uh, in fact, two chips are there uh, here in order to uh, give you uh, one uh, megabyte of storage here. Like this, you have two sets. So, total in total, you get uh, two megabytes of uh, storage available uh, uh, RAM uh, which is connected to the IO pins of the FPGA, and that FPGA is uh, uh, basically on uh, um, Xilinx FPGA, and uh, part of it could be uh, on uh, CPLD or wholly CPLD, which we will be seeing when we see the actual pin configuration. Next we have uh, uh, very good fixtures for uh, for example, a video decoder is available in order to cater to NTSC PAL CCOM signals. So, this is the TB signal that you be getting and you can uh, collect this one and uh, convert that analog signal uh, into digital signal. So, this is what we refer as digitization and uh, it is through RCA jack or S video connector and uh, it outputs this uh, there is a video decoder chip on the board and that uh, brings about this uh, digitization and uh, it outputs naturally to the FPGA for further processing such as uh, video compression we have seen earlier and uh, that being involved we may not cover uh, this on the board we may cover simpler uh, uh, applications such as uh, traffic light controller and so on and uh, it also has a RAM plus a DAC, DAC stands for the uh, digital to analog converter and uh, this can be con um, used for converting uh, I mean uh, 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 color of uh, for example, NTSC you have received if you want to display it on the monitor the computer monitor that you have right here and uh, uh, you can uh, that is called a VGA interface or uh, VGA monitor is uh, you can be uh, it can be connected through this uh, RAM DAC chip and it has some uh, 256 uh, entries available and that much storage is available on this and uh, you can configure for uh, true color 
say 24 bit color map you can ha configure and uh, that is used by the FPGA to output uh, video to a VGA monitor. In addition to this it also has um, a decoder a stereo codec here uh, on the board and uh, it also does the uh, digitization of the actual um, audio analog signal. The audio range uh, although it is only uh, from uh, 20 to 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz uh, actually this uh, uh, stereo codec is capable of uh, processing right from 0 to 50 kilohertz and uh, uh, resolution is this, uh, I mean once the uh, digitization is involved you speak of resolution number of bits. So, it can handle up to 20 bits and uh, we have already seen uh, you have an ethernet uh, ch chip for um, uh, uh, connecting it to a LAN and uh, up to 100 Mbps link is possible with this board. And uh, you also have uh, some expansion headers which we will be using for uh, some of the applications that we are going to consider and uh, two expansion headers uh, are available on uh, right on the board and they are all basically connected to the FPG IO pins and uh, total number of such IO are uh, 76 uh, putting together all the I mean uh, both the uh, expansion headers. And uh, right on the card you also have some four push buttons which you can configure for any of your application and uh, one 8 bit uh, DAP switch is also available and uh, it uh, provides a general purpose inputs to FPGA as well as the CPLD. In addition to this you have uh, two 7 segment LEDs and uh, one uh, bar graph LED and I think it is uh, 10 bar you can display. And, uh, uh, it lets the FPGA as well as CPLD uh, display status information I mean, uh, you can display the uh, any information that you want here or any parameter engineering units that you are processing in your application can also be uh, displayed by using some of this uh, displays. It also has a mouse keyboard uh, interconnection through a port called PS2 and uh, this once again is connected to the FPGAs and uh, it uh, offers the FPGA access to common PC input devices and uh, you have a USB port and uh, uh, here it is capable of it is a basically a serial link and uh, it is connected to once again FPGA through a special uh, chip right on the chip and uh, it has a bandwidth of 1.5 Mbps to 12 Mbps. This is the rate at which you can communicate serially. And, uh, you also have a parallel as well as serial uh, ports available right on this and we will be using parallel port in order to download the bitstream that we have uh, for our application. And uh, it will um, a parallel serial port interfaces let the CPLD send and receive data in a parallel or serial format similar to a PC. This is uh, precisely same as a PC um, uh, uh, LPT uh, printer uh, interface which is a parallel pa uh, port. Uh, which you are already familiar and uh, it also has another way of uh, communicating the bitstream in addition to this parallel or serial uh, fashion and that is by a special cable called exchequer cable uh, of course we will not be using this here and uh, this also helps in uh, downloading your uh, bitstream and uh, you can also read back uh, what you have already configured on the FPGA and uh, the board will have to be connected to a power supply external power supply you can uh, connect either a 9 volts power jack or a specially connected um, uh, ATX power connector and uh, on, right on the board both of them are on the board and uh, it lets the excess be uh, board receive power from a standard ATX power supply. This is uh, the air supply which uh, we do not have and uh, in, um, uh, in lieu of this we have just a uh, simple uh, power supply 9 volt supply or you can use. Uh, if you have um, uh, uh, an adapter for this you can use, but um, current rating will have to be 1.5 amps at least. So, that is what you have to take into account and uh, normally the uh, uh, board require demands 5 volts and 3.3 volts uh, perhaps a 2.5 volts uh, also DC is also required and all are derived right from 9 volts which we can uh, supply externally or you can um, supply from this uh, power supply ATX power supply. And uh, so, we can uh, now uh, having seen all these uh, features of the board, we can see this pictorially uh, how the board looks like. This is how the board looks. You can see right on the top there is a uh, this is a, a jack here 
and uh, you can connect the conventional 9 volts jack and uh, supply power and uh, power requirement is uh, you have to have at least 1.5 amps and uh, we also need the parallel port interconnection that is uh, associated with this will be a cable parallel, uh, parallel uh, port cable will be there and uh, this will go into the um, uh, LPT1 or LPT2 which you can configure on the um, uh, host processor namely the Pentium. So, uh, it is through this uh, cable that you are going to download uh, into the uh, vertex FPGA which is here and uh, before we arrive at this we will see uh, different uh, uh, all other features uh, in the same order. So, uh, in addition to this parallel port we also have a serial port and uh, you can use for any of the application for example, you want to have uh, RS232 type of serial link uh, for um, between your board and the PC uh, 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 personal computer and uh, you can have a serial cable connected and uh, whatever application you have configured you can download uh, your uh, data information uh, through the serial port onto the um, host system and uh, vice versa and thereby you can uh, um, configure a total system for catering to a particular application. Say for example, if you, you want to do a uh, data acquisition system, so you can have um, you can send uh, any data based on real time and uh, you can send uh, to and fro data uh, between this uh, FPGA board and uh, also the personal computer. So, uh, for that you can use the serial port and uh, as we have already seen that one RCA jack and S video jack are available here and uh, there is also a chip uh, which is the video decoder and uh, this takes in the uh, NTSC or PAL CCOM uh, uh, TV signal and uh, routes that particular to the uh, vertex FPGA uh, 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 pins, via the pins uh, I mean I O pins you can uh, transact whatever uh, image that you have co um, uh, collected via this uh, signal I mean uh, uh, be it NTSC or PAL signal we can route it to the FPGA and do further processing such as compression and uh, the next uh, we have also a uh, power supply connector here and that is what uh, needs to be connected here either you connect this uh, or, or the uh, 9 volts here. So, we are going to use only the 9 volts connection not this and uh, we have also seen an exchequer uh, interconnection is also there through uh, this and uh, we are not going to use instead of this we are going to use the parallel uh, interface in order to connect it to a PC LPT1 and uh, we have uh, another uh, um, I mean, uh, uh, switches here for example, an 8 bit DAP switch is available here and uh, you can uh, use it for any of your application for example, you want to set uh, a particular value a timing value suppose you are uh, running a timer you can set your timer or etcetera right at the uh, DAP switch and uh, or any other uh, parameter you wish to uh, set you can set through the DAP switch and uh, this will be connected to uh, both the CPLD which is house here and uh, as well as the uh, vertex FPGA here and uh, uh, what we have is uh, on board XCB 800 is capable of uh, nearly 900,000 uh, gates. Uh, we can put a huge um, uh, um, and, uh, um, circuitry inside uh, this. Our application is going to reside here. It is going to come through this parallel port uh, right on to this uh, uh, FPGA. And uh, we are going to download a dot bit. For example, if it is a traffic controller, we are going to uh, generate a tra uh, traffic controller dot bit uh, by using a place and route. And uh, that particular uh, bit stream we are going to download and um, onto this. For this you need a software associated uh, with this board, Access uh, also supplies uh, software which we need to load it on the to the system and that will have to be run and uh, only then you can uh, communicate with this uh, board uh, effectively. In fact, without that it will be a uh, it is almost impossible uh, to um, communicate with this, it, you have to have that and uh, in addition to this CPLD we also have um, two digits. Um, uh, 77 LEDs which we have already seen and uh, this we will see little later uh, some of details how you go about connecting different segments. In addition to this we uh, mentioned that there is a 10 bar segment that is what is here in fact, uh, similar segments will be placed here one segment here one below another all 10 will be uh, available here this is a bar uh, display 
and uh, you can use it for some display of histograms in uh, uh, some of your engineering units you may design and uh, you can use for such application and so also the two uh, LEDs and um, you also have a 16 uh, megabit flash uh, RAM available and that is house Kia and in addition to this we have uh, 2 megabytes of uh, static RAM storage and as I mentioned they are all uh, arranged as uh, 512k uh, bytes here and uh, 2 such uh, devices uh, would give you 512k into 16 which we have already seen in the features earlier and uh, like this we have 2 sets here. So, in uh, totality you get a 2 million uh, bytes of RAM storage and uh, you have further this uh, expansion connector and basically suppose um, you are not satisfied with the storage available on the, uh, this 2 million um, bytes storage you can expand it by using this expansion uh, connector and um, or uh, you may have to disable while expanding you may have to disable this uh, RAM if you want to put much more storage or you do not want to use the internal storage. So, you may have to extra um, um, have put an extra card outside and connect that card to this expansion connectors here <coughs> available on both sides and uh, while doing so you may have to uh, disable uh, this by uh, appropriate jumper connection. Uh, which is uh, um, available on the board and uh, all these uh, details are available in the uh, manual which uh, part of which uh, you are already having a look right now. And uh, uh, what we are going to do is we are not going to put uh, an external uh, RAM uh, we are not uh, even going to use the internal RAM and uh, for one of the applications to start with uh, we will be going for a traffic light controller which we have already seen which you are already familiar that will be the first application we will be taking and uh, for that particular application uh, we need uh, need this expansion uh, connector and we do not need any other resources we have already seen except for the power supply and the parallel uh, port connection. And uh, we also have in addition to this uh, we will uh, get uh, I mean we will see more details of expansion connector later on. And uh, we have also seen there are uh, 4 push button switches and they are all placed here in this order SW1234 are placed in this order and uh, we have an uh, ethernet uh, chip here available and we have also seen that a ram DAC used for video uh, VGA monitor uh, connection it is here. VGA output is uh, available through this connector and uh, uh, the processing chip is this uh, available here and uh, uh, we also have um, uh, a port for uh, a mouse keyboard connection and a USB port is available here and for all these different chips are also used in uh, here one of this here and uh, we also have a stereo input you can give the audio input here and uh, whatever uh, so for example you want to compress the audio you can um, uh, route this particular thing uh, it, it will have a chip uh, it has a chip here which digitizes and uh, gives a 20 bit resolution uh, output which can be connected to the uh, say FPGA and you can do the compression of uh, sound uh, uh, you, uh, you can do MP3 um, uh, for audio layer you can if you want you can uh, do such a project based on I mean uh, using this and for that purpose you can use this for any other um, uh, uh, processing of audio signal you can uh, use and uh, uh, since uh, only digitized signals are available here. Uh, right on to the FPG pins you can do any processing that you wish and uh, you can have an USB port which we have already seen and uh, it is capable of up to uh, 12 Mbps. So, you can have a established a serial link in addition to this RS232 serial link which we have already seen and that will go only for uh, say 19600 bots uh, baud means bits per second uh, and this is the uh, board feature that um, we have uh, had a look and we will actually have a look at the board when uh, after a while and uh, before this there are uh, the manual gives lots of jumper settings etcetera which will have to uh, go through yourself and uh, there is also a software associated with that which you will have to install as I mentioned before and uh, we will uh, skip this because it is a matter of details pertaining to uh, how to configure. So, now what is important is. Uh, 
uh, we have already seen how to apply power uh, there is a jack there and uh, there are two ways of applying power either you go for uh, 9 volts which we are going to do and um, uh, through a jack separate jack or uh, ATX power supply supplied by them uh, excess uh, corporation and uh, for which you need to connect to a different connector I mean uh, place and uh, I, I, uh, notice that 1.5 amps is the actual requirement. So, in real practice it is taking less than 1 amp, but when you configure the clock etcetera uh, it will require uh, it may touch 1.25 amps or so. So, if you put a 1 amp supply you will get into trouble it will it will start malfunctioning. So, be on your guard while uh, selecting the power supply and uh, see the uh, ensure that it is uh, capable of supplying at least 1.5 amps. And uh, when supply is supplied there is also an LED to indicate that uh, the power is on. So, what we are going to do is we had to uh, follow certain procedure as far as um, this board is concerned not to uh, use it for your application. The first thing is you may have to uh, uh, when you uh, connect the board and uh, the board connection is quite simple and uh, to the FPGA uh, board is connected uh, um, uh, cable to the parallel port and connected straight away to the LPT 1 printer or LPT 2 any parallel port on your host system can be connected. And, uh, and in addition to the power supply that is the only connection that you really require on the board and uh, we will be seeing this later on. And uh, uh, once you have connected and uh, supplies are on and of course, for the system as well uh, host system as well. And, uh, you have what is called um, a separate window and uh, if you uh, for example, this window what it says is GXS test. If I will first open the uh, this is the uh, this will be very difficult for you to look into the uh, on onto the screen, but I can make out what it is. Say uh, if I just say this it is for uh, uh, test. So, that is a icon for text if I double click what I am doing it opens this window it may be very difficult for you to view. So, therefore, I will uh, go back to the same thing and uh, GX test this is a bloated up view and you see notice that you can select different boards for example, if it is uh, um, XCV 800. So, you had to click here for example, I will go back that is right here uh, this is the icon which was cl uh, clicked earlier and this is the one which will actually uh, configure uh, the actual system and uh, which we have already seen and uh, if you click here I am going to click here it will open out a list of boards. So, that is uh, over a dozen boards are available and uh, for example, XSV 800 is the last thing that is here then 50, 100, 300 so many other, other boards are available. And uh, once uh, you have selected the decide one for example, XSV 800 you have to do what is shown here is 300 we have to switch I mean uh, select XSV 800 the way that I have already shown. And similarly, uh, suppose you have connected to the host uh, some other printer I mean uh, port connection for example, instead of LPT 1 had you connected uh, LPT 2 or LPT 3 then you had to once again select by um, this uh, drop menu here by this. And after this you had to just um, uh, click on test then immediately a test sequence will be uh, followed and I am not going to do this because uh, this is a regular thing which you can uh, very easily do yourself. So, uh, this is what you have to do you have merely to uh, uh, click on this test first uh, click on the uh, select the board and select the port and then click on the uh, test uh, test. And then once the test is uh, passed if it is not passed it will tell you why, what the reasons are why it is not passing and you will be led step by step in order to correct. And, um, if you cannot correct uh, through all those steps you will have to get in touch with the uh, manufacturer. And uh, once you are done with the test you can exit by uh, closing this uh, button. So, for example, I can exit here and uh, next is. So, I will read out what I have said here in case you find it difficult to read it out yourself. Once your XSV board is installed and the jumpers are in the default configuration. Uh, you will be um, uh, tell I mean told uh, what jumpers to install and uh, the sequence etcetera will also be told step by step and uh, uh, failure if any will also be reported and uh, it will help you to the maximum extent possible. And you can test the board using the GUI based GX test utility as follows. So, you uh, you start GX test by clicking 
on the icon that we have already seen place on the desktop during the access tools installation. This uh, uh, during the installation time only you need to do this. Subsequently, I mean uh, for subsequent use you do not need this and uh, so also the clock if you are not going to change the clock which we will be seeing uh, next. And uh, by clicking on this you get this one which is what we have already seen. Next you select the parallel port that your XSB board is connected to from the uh, uh, port this also we have seen. Then uh, GXS starts with parallel port LPT1 as the default, but you can also select LPT2 or LPT3 uh, depending upon the configuration of your PC. So, this is for uh, different uh, boards which we have already seen. I am not going to read out everything, only the salient points I am going to read. Uh, GX test uh, will configure the FPGA to perform a test procedure on your XSV board. This is what the text is for, test is for. And after several seconds, you will see a 0 displayed on the LED digit if the test completes successfully. Uh, if it is not successful, uh, E will be displayed and a status window will also appear on your PC screen informing you of the success or failure of the test. This is what we have already seen. If your XSV board fails the test, you will be shown a checklist of common causes for failure. If none of these causes applies to your situation, then test the XSV board using another PC and uh, uh, he gives their uh, experience. Otherwise, you have to get in touch with the manufacturer. So, we also have uh, next is to program the clock and uh, you have to do the setting and uh, in order to program the clock. For example, uh, as a default you can run the um, your uh, FPGA based design right at 100 megahertz and there will be a divisor which will be seen uh, shortly. If that, um, uh, that divisor is 1 naturally you will get 100 megahertz as the uh, operating frequency. Suppose you put the device at 2, you will get 50 megahertz and so on you can uh, operate at different uh, frequencies. And uh, say for example, uh, XSV board has a 100 megahertz programmable oscillator and uh, the chip uh, used for this purpose also is mentioned here. And uh, the uh, master frequency can be divided by factors 1, 2 right up to 2052. So, this is what you can um, uh, put uh, in the um, uh, menu that is going to come here. And uh, for corresponding to 2052, you will get a 48.7 kilohertz, and this will be the operating frequency of your uh, actual uh, board. And uh, the divided uh, frequency is sent to the rest of the XSV board circuitry as a clock signal. So, this is the uh, master clock we can say after the division is incorporated. The divisor is stored in non volatile memory in the oscillator chip, so it will resume operation at its programmed frequency whenever power is applied to the XSV board. You can store a particular divisor into the uh, oscillator chip by using uh, this clock what we see as the icon here. So, you can uh, click on this in order to start uh, by clicking on, on this uh, clock icon uh, on the desktop during the access to, uh, tool installation. This uh, out comes the uh, pops um, window which is uh, similar to what we have already seen for the test with the exception that it is for clock. And uh, once again you have to select your board type here, uh, here you have to select 800 and LPT 1 uh, which is already there here. And here you have to key in uh, 1 or 2 depending upon how many uh, megahertz of operation you want. For example, if you put 2, I think we, have, we are going to use uh, device at 2, uh, is it right? And uh, so, uh, that will give uh, corresponding 50 megahertz operation. And uh, so, once this is done, you can just say uh, click on set and then finally, um, you can exit. Suppose, uh, you do not want the um, uh, clock generated in this fashion, you can also feed an external clock by putting this tick naturally the external clock will be taken in which case you have also to install the jumper uh, right on the board which you can get it from the manual. And uh, we are not going to use this feature, we are going to use this divisor and we are going to uh, put 2 for our uh, traffic controller application which we are going to take next. So, uh, what we have already described is already here and uh, I do not have to go in uh, through all this. Uh, next step is uh, for this you can the icon is here, so this is clock. So, this precisely, precisely what we got for the clock and uh, if I say exit it will go off and or you can dismiss it off. And uh, next one is
we have to load uh, the bitstream and uh, what you have already um, uh, uh, developed and, uh, during the last um, uh, right up to the placent route. Uh, you have got a bitstream and that is what you need to download in order to download your application pro, uh, code. So, prior to doing this one you also need for uh, you have to in, um, um, initialize CPLD because just uh, that particular um, CPLD is for uh, managing the whole uh, uh, configuration and it can also uh, you can also uh, put your codes and execute small uh, uh, codes and uh, major codes will always be residing in the FPG vertex 2 and uh, uh, this particular uh, menu is once again um, uh, uh, for uh, board selection for example, XSV uh, 800 you can select here and once again the port which we are all um, uh, seeing along all, all along and this is for LPT 1 because uh, we have connected LPT 1 in this case. And here you will see that uh, one um, field for FPGA as well as CPLD and uh, it is here you have to drop the um, uh, actual uh, bit files and uh, you have to have uh, ready another uh, window opened uh, for the uh, bit files uh, the folder in which you have uh, put your uh, bit file and um, just pick it up and drop it here. So, uh, then uh, after that this uh, load which is not energized right now that will get um, activated and um, once you press the load button it will download the bit stream that is available here and uh, suppose you want to uh, put uh, from a file uh, into a RAM. So, we have already seen uh, 2 megabytes of RAM is available or a flash RAM is also available and uh, that can be uh, put here in this. This uh, column is for RAM and this is for the uh, flash uh, RAM and or uh, E square prom. And uh, you have uh, once you say RAM or uh, flash RAM uh, there will be a low order, uh, order address as well as high order address. This is the um, it is a basically uh, starting from this address to address whatever is um, available in the file uh, transfer that particular file contents into this particular uh, RAM uh, whose address starts from here low address and uh, ends up with higher address uh, and uh, you can uh, use that for this. And uh, in order to um, uh, transfer your uh, bit stream I mean uh, configure bit stream you do not require any of these features and uh, we may not be using this and uh, we will be using this field. And uh, before that let me read what uh, it, it has to say. Uh, we have to click on GXS load icon placed on the desktop during the access tools uh, installation. This brings up the uh, window uh, shown below. Then select the type XSV board you are using and the parallel port to which it is connected as uh, described previously. So, after setting the board type and parallel port you can uh, download an dot SVF file to the CPLD on your XSV board simply by dragging it into the FPGA CPLD area of the GXS load window as shown below. To program the CPLD with the parallel port interface drag the so, this is the file you had to uh, drag in order to um, uh, program the uh, CPLD. Uh, this is a download uh, parallel, uh, am I right in this? This is a download parallel, it is a dot uh, SVF extension file and uh, it is there in XTools XSV folder. And uh, so, once you uh, um, download this one, I mean uh, drop it in this field. So, once again this will that load will be energized and then you have to press the load and uh, I think next described will be that. We also have another uh, menu displayed here and uh, you can see this. This is what is another uh, window opened. Uh, you go to that particular folder for example, C XS tools for um, stroke XSV and uh, uh, you have to download uh, you have to pick up that uh, download uh, uh, PAR that is uh, uh, for a short form for the parallel that uh, dot SVF file just uh, click on the mouse uh, do not uh, release it and uh, drag it there you will see that uh, this file is accompanying here uh, and uh, drop it here when you come into this. Once you drop that file will um, uh, be uh, got here uh, listed here and um, this will be energized the load button will uh, be energized and then you can press the load then the actual downloading will take place. Uh, taking this as the source file and um, CPLD will be programmed. Once you release the left mouse button and drop the file, the highlighted file name appears in the FPGA CPLD area 
and the load button in the GX load window is enabled. Uh, clicking on the load button will uh, begin sending the dot uh, SVF file to the CPLD on the XSV board through the parallel port connection. During the downloading process GXS load will display the name of the file and the uh, progress of the uh, current download. So, this is what we have already seen and this is precisely what we have already seen. So, we will uh, skip this and uh, only difference is this load has been energized here that is what once CPLD is programmed with the parallel port interface circuit you can remove the shunt uh, these are all jumper settings which you can easily follow I am just skipping all the uh, jumpers you might uh, really get bored listening to all jumper settings. So, next is the actual application file for example, you want to have your traffic light controller. So, we will be having a traffic light controller um, in your folder just as we had um, uh, in the previous folder for the CPLD uh, download pair and uh, here will be listed your traffic controller dot bit and uh, once the CPLD is programmed with the downloading interface circuit you can download bit streams into the vertex of PGA using the GXS load. So, utility make sure that is a shunt across this once again a jump uh, um, is reminding that a jumper must be installed and uh, you had to do lots of jugglery with this jumpers. So, uh, let me not uh, get into details of that and it is very easy to follow uh, the manual contains step by step procedure for all this and uh, then drag and drop one or more dot bit files and uh, for the type of vertex FPGA on your XSV board into the FPGA CPLD area which is this and uh, of the GX load window. Clicking your mouse on a uh, file name will highlight the name and select the file for downloading that is how by clicking this uh, it will highlight and uh, this will uh, be energized only one bit stream file at a time can be selected. Clicking on the load button causes the highlighted uh, vertex uh, configuration bit stream to pass through the parallel port and CPLD and then into the FPGA. So, double clicking the highlighted file with deselect um, if you do not want you can double click. So, just ignore that it disables the load button if you do not want. So, once you have clicked the load uh, downloading actually, actually starts. You can have a non volatile storage and we will not go into the details of this 2 megabyte flash RAM is available as I have said and uh, we will skip all this and go to a uh, relevant portion regarding the IOS that we have already seen. So, these are all basically uh, the same thing. So, all flash RAM everything the manual has all this uh, interconnection and you can see the uh, SRAM there and the pin configuration everything is seen here and uh, video decoder. So, we will skip all this we are not going to uh, into details of this. Here uh, we have a expansion header which we have already talked about and we are going to use this one in order to connect to our uh, extra um, IO card which will be dealing next and uh, after this uh, FPG card is shown and that will be used in our uh, uh, first application uh, namely the traffic controller and uh, for this we need uh, both this expansion uh, uh, cables connected and on to this uh, expansion header and uh, so we also uh, next what we will do is we will go on to uh, uh, push button switches etcetera which is here. For example, uh, the CPLD as well as uh, FPG are connected to the push button switches in this fashion. The uh, DAP switch we have already seen uh, is uh, 8 bits actually and a single uh, switch and uh, they are all pulled high here as you can see this is uh, VCC or plus 5 volt and uh, all these signals are going not only to the FPGA, but also to the uh, uh, CPLD. So, you can use for, um, uh, even user application uh, can be residing in CPLD or if not FPGA if the uh, application is uh, uh, much longer in size. And you also have uh, 4 push button switches and they are also connected in sim similar fashion it is uh, normally open. So, and they are all pulled uh, to ground. So, whenever you sh short this particular uh, I O pin will go low and otherwise it will be pulled high that is logic one. And, uh, We have also a uh, bar graph here for uh, uh, that is a LED 
seven segment LEDs as well as a bar graph here. Uh, once again they are connected to the CPLD as well as uh, FPGA and uh, they are all uh, in parallel. So, that uh, for um, depending upon your application you can use um, either CPLD or FPGA in, uh, and download your bitstream and uh, we will be using this FPGA, but we will not be using this LEDs for our traffic light controller, but um, another I O card which we will be covering next. And, uh, some of this uh, LED connections are all shown here and the vertex FPGA pin actual pin numbers are all shown here. There are uh, two LEDs one is left other is right. So, they go under uh, SL uh, 0 through uh, 6 for 7 segment and one, there is no decimal point. So, uh, this is a rather uh, a handicap uh, where a decimal point is required and uh, in the I O card that we will be showing later on uh, that decimal point is also available and uh, similarly a bar graph uh, pin connections are available here right here. This should be sufficient uh, in order to tackle this FPGA board and uh, in the next class we will be seeing uh, how this um, I O card looks like and uh, we will go into the details and uh, finally, uh, show a demo uh, using this uh, FPGA card as well as I O card. Uh, the traffic controller which we have designed before.